you're worried about supporting someone experiencing domestic violence through this time of coronavirus restrictions, then I urge you, please watch this short video. Did you know that when natural disasters occur, rates of domestic violence increase? This is a sad fact, and women and children in particular are at greater risk. Domestic violence is typically a pattern of behaviour where one person uses power and control to intimidate another person in their household, usually their spouse or partner, often resulting in fear and trauma. It is made up of a range of controlling behaviours, which can include physical or sexual violence, though it is not always so visible. Experiencing domestic violence can also feel like walking on eggshells, the kind of manipulation which makes the victim wonder if they are going crazy. To compensate for the fact that things are out of control outside their home, a perpetrator may begin to increase their use of control inside the home. And with social isolation regulations, both limiting a victim's contact with their support networks and placing them in closer contact with the perpetrator, the risk of domestic violence increases. More time together inside the home could see a rise in abuse of children or sexual abuse of a partner. The risk of infection may be used to threaten or intimidate. It may be used as an excuse by a perpetrator for greater monitoring and social control or financial abuse. It could also result in an increased use of alcohol or other drugs, which can make abuses more severe. So here are five practical tips to help you support someone experiencing domestic violence during this time of coronavirus. Or maybe you yourself are now feeling unsafe in your relationship or home. Tip one, make your inquiries general. If someone you know is experiencing domestic violence, please try to carefully check in on them. Until you are sure that the perpetrator is not in the vicinity, make your inquiry general. The last thing you want to do is make their current situation more unsafe. Tip two, agree on a code word. If possible, set up an agreed code word that your friend or loved one can use to let you or a designated person know when they need help in an emergency so the police can be called. And be aware that the perpetrator may be monitoring their electronic communication, so try to use a pre-agreed way to communicate. Tip three, give them your support. Check that your friend or loved one has access to enough food and personal care essentials, that these are not being withheld. Encourage them to keep planning for their safety and the safety of their children by building on what they already do. Remind them that help is still available and they are allowed to leave if they are unsafe. Tip four, be careful not to minimise. Perhaps you have recently noticed something of concern or maybe you yourself are now feeling unsafe in your relationship or home. Maybe you've had concerns for a while, but now things have intensified. New disclosures or concerns about domestic violence need to be taken seriously. Be careful not to minimise this as just the stress everyone is under. Take it seriously. Even these new levels of stress are not an excuse for abuse. Everyone has a right to feel safe. Reach out to professional services that are here to support you. Tip five, what to do if you feel unsafe. If you are living with a violent or abusive partner, identify safe places in the house where you can retreat or call for help. Try to keep a phone charged and with you. Think about transport options if you need to leave and where you might initially go to be safe. And if things escalate, call the police, even if you are in isolation. Remember, God sees you and knows your needs. May the God of all peace comfort and strengthen you with his great love at this time.